Hello YouTubers. Today we're going to go over our lettuce hydroponic setup. It's called an NFT system or nutrient film technique. Lettuce sits down in little two inch net cups. There's a very thin layer of water that goes right up underneath the cups. Um, once again this is East Texas. It's hot. Let's see if we can get a close up of the temperature. Right now the temperature in the tubes is 83. I'm going to show you a way that you can take that down a little bit and it is well it's 12 o'clock so we're in the shade sitting inside the garage so we're not in direct sunlight but they seem to be doing fairly decent now the two big ones down here I cheated and I bought those I just wanted to see what it was supposed to look like now everything else that you see up there is completely from seed and we went ahead and this was my very first hydroponics experiment all of the lettuces that we started with were seeds and I didn't know anything about leggy plants but these suckers were leggy big time and as you can tell the date the plant date was May the 9th and they were put in the hydroponic system on the 17th of May. Today is the 16th of June, so it's right at one month of growth. Once again, we're fighting the heat. Uh, the lowest I can really get my water during the day is about 75. Sometimes it gets on up to 78, but I think we might have a solution for that also. The system is based upon <laughs> Another YouTuber, Greener Ways 2012, he had a double, or he had a complete A-frame. This is just a half of the A-frame. My little cheating one, you can see down inside there. Net cut with the roots coming down. The drain part, we can add to it to get the water level up to about halfway of the net cut when we first start everything out. As you can tell, this one has some roots that are down into the water when there's water running through it. And it drains back. And it's a big, complete, recyclable system. I'm on. I've changed my tubs. I was using dollar store tubs, but went ahead and splurged a little bit. I wanted to make it to where I could completely get another tub ready. And turn off the water, change the pump out, the bubbler, and put it into another tub as quick as I could. That's what we came up with so far, so we're going to see if it works or not. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to mix up some chemicals for the lettuce. This one here we're using is MHP Gardeners. We have our master blend, our calcium nitrate, magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. This is going to be a 10 10 5 mixture. We'll mix it right there in the coffee cup, throw it down over into the 5 gallon bucket, stir it up a little bit, put it into your main reservoir, and kick the pump back on before these wilt anymore. That's normally what they look like at around 12 o'clock during the day when the heat of the day is on them. Let's see if I can get this to where y'all can see it as we're doing it. Then this is going to be in a 10 10. Yep, too much. Not a fancy, fancy scale. Got this one off of Amazon. I believe Walmart had the same exact one. I want to say it was like 15, 20 bucks, something like that. Gets a lot closer than me just guessing. take it up to 20 that's pretty good take some out and you gain some weight I'm not sure how that's happening it must be that high-tech equipment we're using and this here will be five grams of the Epsom salts and 
And there you go. We'll take this. Dump it into the bucket. I've been noticing, I, I don't think it's my fertilizer, but I'm noticing some deposits down in the bottom of my totes. So, just to make sure, that ought to be mixed. Okay, let's load this thing up and see what's going to happen. Okay, now I know from experience, my part's from alien. This is tap water. That's before I had the rain barrel hooked up to the gutters. My typical parts for me and in tap water is 400, between 400 and 450. Oh, so this will be 398. And also notice that in the shade, the water temperature is 79.7 degrees. Doesn't feel like it's 80 degrees. Feels like good enough to swim in. Our tap water is basically parts per million or TDS total dissolved solid is about 400 now the lettuce wants as far as parts per million fertilizer nutrients they want between 560 and 840 so we got to do a little math here you add 400 to that so what I'm looking for is 960 to 1240 because my tap water has got parts per million in it or it's got 400 already so let's see what we got. Looks like we got 1200, which is a little bit on the high end, but hey, it just got mixed up. It hadn't been going over the roots yet. Don't worry, they will uh, they'll start sucking the nutrients out like crazy. And I imagine they're probably gonna start sucking the water out pretty quick here also. As soon as we fire it up. All right. We also know that lettuce wants 5.5 to 6.5 pH. I believe our tap water is about 7.5, 7.8, somewhere in there. Um, whenever you put your fertilizer, your nutrients in your water, it will lower your pH. So always make sure and mix the batch up first. And before you start running it and everything, just mix it up, get it where you want it to be. Then run it, run it for a couple of hours. And I'll go ahead and I'll check mine again and make any adjustments. Um, it, it takes a while for everything to get back in sync when you change out your reservoir, but it shouldn't be that big of a variance up and down. This is showing we're going to have 7.1 or 7.08, so 7.1. We'll need to drop that at least a point. What we'll do is put some pH down in it. Now I can tell by the markings on the bucket here, each one of these is 5 gallons. So we have 5, 10, this would be 15, not quite 15 gallons up in there. I'll need to add a little bit more. Might actually drop the pH down a little bit. There we go. Now we should have approximately 15 gallons in there. Let's give it a little stir. Now let's kick some pH. With 15 gallons in here, our pH is going to be 7.2. What I'm going to shoot for is about 6. I've been trying to keep a pretty good record of how much of this pH up or down that I use. Most of the time, it's always I'm using pH down. So what we're going to do is start out with two capfuls for 15 gallons. And what we'll do is unhook the pump. Let it help mix up the water a little bit. Okay, let's go get the big jug. Finally got some of this in. Botanic air. pH down. Now, I'm not sure how much stronger than this is than the other stuff I was using, so it's always better to take it down a little bit at a time than have to bring it back up. So we're gonna start out with a cap full. Okay, a little bit more adjustments. And we finally got our pH down to 6.35. Actually, I know I've got a standard 7.0 mixture in my cabinet. This is reading 0.1 high. So actually, instead of 6.38, I'm actually probably reading about 6.28. I can live with that. At least till it gets run through the entire system and the plant's roots 
for a couple of hours. We'll come back and check it and we'll adjust then. About a thousand and thirty. Anything above 960 with my 400 already sitting in it. A little bit on the low side, but once again, I want to see how it's going to react with when it hits the entire system. I finally talked my wife into letting me get one of these. Blue Lab Commercial Trunk In. <coughs> Nutrient Meter. Now, I'm not going to get all off into the CFs and the ECs and the parts per million times 500 or 700 and American versus European. I know <coughs> the American way made it a little bit harder. I don't know why we got to make things harder. Besides the metric system, I'm not all about that metric system. But anyways, and my parts per million, between 1,000 and 1,200, which would be about right. That's what the TDS meter is telling us also. Now, if that's not how you use this equipment, feel free to let me know. Comment, email. I just haven't played with this enough to get into the technical aspect of it. Well, we're going to call that mix for good. So let's hook everything back up. Let's run it through the entire system. Okay, here we have everything back up and running. I tell already I like this kind of tote a lot better for holding water. Next time I need to change it out, all I got to do is take the pump off where it's fed through, pump wiring and airline, slide right out, drain straight out the top, swap them out. Make life so much easier. There's about three gallons running in the pipes. That's all the root that is out on that plant. That one little, I guess if will, tap root is keeping that thing alive. Get over to one of the bigger ones. This is the root system on this plant, as you can tell, a lot bigger. Of course, it has a lot more plant to support. Same up here. A lot more plant to support. I turned all the plants, as you can tell, it's this way. Well, the sun and the side of the garage is over there. And if you don't think the sun has a big deal to play with in all these little plants, believe me, you'll start to see a difference. By tonight, or probably tomorrow morning, all those plants will be standing up and going the other direction, toward the, straight toward the sun. And I told you I was going to show you how to keep the temperature down. Temperature of the water inside the pipe is 80 degrees, almost 81. What we're going to do, pop the lid here. And we're going to drop in a Coke sickle. Two liter Coke bottle, frozen solid with water. Try to get it kind of close to the pump so it'll cool the air as it's going through, or cool the water as it's going through the pump. Normally, I'll put two of those in there, but normally that will keep your water temperature even in the heat of the day, it'll keep it about 75. Sometimes we'll go a little higher than that. What I've been starting to do is I'll come out, get two of it in the morning and place them in there, two at lunch, and then two at dinner time or right before dark. That keeps it right around 75, between 70 and 75. If I could get it down to about 65, it'd be even better, but not in East Texas. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, Based on how I built the system, just a real quick rundown of it. Have an air pump back there. Have a eco, I think it's an Eco Plus pump. I'd have to pull the box again. Pump comes out, goes up to half inch poly. Each one of the polys where I, I put it in, we had the silicone around it. And that one doesn't have an adapter, but this one here, I put these on there a couple of weeks ago. Just in case, if we don't want to use every single rail and grow this many of whatever we're growing I can turn them off and 
won't have to use them all. I think the next thing we're going to try to do is we're, we might try to do lettuces again now that I've kind of figured out some of the things to do and not to do. Anyways, if you have any questions on how the system's built, comments on how to make it better, feel free to email me, comment in the section below, and we'll see you next time on YouTube.